When Ryan, our senior, called me and then asked me to call Matt too, I hadn't expected things to end the way they did. I knew about the case, obviously, but usually Ryan assigned such cases to only one police officer. Not everyone had to be involved in some grisly case. Matt, I said, a little irritated that he wasn't paying attention. Ryan's calling you. He looked up, his eyes wide and sleepy. The sight immediately reminded me of something, but I squashed down the memory with my imaginary expensive boots. Why are you telling me that? He can call me himself. I nearly growled in annoyance. He wants to talk to us both. Right. He replied and licked his bottom lip. God, I hate getting up. I need to sleep. Well, that's what the nights are for. I walked to our senior's cabin and heard him follow me with heavy steps. I just hope it's not for that case, but why would he call us both? Five minutes later, I had my answer. With all due respect, sir, I said, and punctuate each of my words, you cannot do that. Matt was sitting by my side and didn't look very pleased with the announcement either. I can do this, Elliot, and I have done it. Now, if you two will excuse me. We cannot work together, sir, I insisted, looking panicked. Matt was silently going through the case file. He didn't look much too pleased to hear about the setting, but he didn't look in the mood to argue either. So I knew I would have to serve as my saving grace. This case, maybe one of us can handle it. We have a million other cases to work on, and I think... Ryan showed me a hand, and I shut up. Despite being known as the mouthy one, I knew when to speak and when to keep my mouth shut. Look, we need to find this man, and I want both of you two to work on it. We don't know what's going on in his head, and we don't know what he may do next. We have to be cautious, and I want both of you to make sure to find him. Dead or alive, doesn't matter. Though I prefer him alive. Less paperwork, you know. He pointed at the case file in Matt's hands. Discuss it over lunch, or whenever you get the time. Meet Stacy and her children at the hospital. I don't want another set of orphan kids on my hands. You get it, Elliot? I slowly nodded. Give me a verbal answer, Elliot. Yes, sir. I understand. My answer sounded mournful. Good. He turned to Matt with a thoughtful look. You always seem the more mature out of the two of you. Make sure this works out fine, Matt. Yes, sir. He replied, the boot-looking sly dog that he was. Ryan locked his hands over the table and looked at both of us very curiously. A year ago, you two worked together and did a splendid job. I want the same kind of results this time around too, okay? He waved us away. And start behaving like actual adults. Yes, sir, we both replied in unison, the sly dogs that we were. When we walked out of his room, I glared at Matt. His expression was soft, but he looked in the mood to entertain my whims. Why didn't you say anything to him? Why should I? He asked dryly. We cannot. Whenever I felt nervous, I got flustered. Work together? Matt proposed and got a smooth smile. Why? Afraid that you find yourself under me again? I wanted to punch his stupidly handsome face. Screw you, I seethed, blushing furiously despite myself. I walked away from there and told him that I didn't want to talk to him until lunch hour. Screw him, I thought viciously. An unhinged part of me immediately thought, but you like that, won't you? He used to beat me, Matt began as he flipped through the pages. Shit, he softly murmured. Stacy has even said she has seen her husband misbehaving with one of her. I poked my spoon in my tiffin. The case reminded me of my own family, of my drunk abusive dad, and my ever so silent mom who never stood up for herself, nor for her only child, me. I remember finding her dead in my parents' bedroom, the window still open to let in some cool winds. I was crying when Dad finally returned home late into the night. He screamed at me to get in my bedroom and called an ambulance. She managed to escape. After that, I was his sole target. I tried to follow her path, but fear of pain, pride, and my dreams didn't let me. I always despised my mom for leaving me behind. My dad was dead now, but that didn't mean I was past any of those memories. I was desperately hung up on them, in fact. Stacy's case didn't help but remind me of my own times, and that was why now it seemed more personal than ever. Maybe by the end, I could help her escape and save her children. 
Hey, back to Earth, mate. Matt waved a hand in front of my face. I am listening, I replied. Are you? He ducked his head a little and looked into my eyes. You're a police officer, and it's a shame you cannot lie to save your life, or anyone else's for that matter. Shut up, I replied. He pursed his lips and sat in silence for a while. What? I asked. You really cannot hide your emotions, you know what. Yes, yeah, someone told me that a year ago. He smirked. Bench, you remember the hours, Elliot. I rolled my eyes. When are you going to see Stacy? He checked his watch. If you're done, let's go now. I nodded and finished the rest of my lunch. We were at the hospital and, by now, made our additional report. Stacy looked disoriented for the most part of our stay, so we talked to her children. The oldest one was 15, and the youngest was 7, the same age as me, when I lost my mom to suicide. The oldest one said their dad had returned home at night after being absent for weeks, drunk, and beaten their mom for hours. When he called the cops, their dad ran and hid himself somewhere. Our task was to find the man and bring him to justice. We already knew most of that, but we were looking for more, and since Stacy was in no position to actually talk, we decided to continue with our own investigation with whatever information we had so far. It wasn't a lot, but it was helpful. Gruesome details, Matt muttered and slapped the notepad over his open palm. I looked at the motion for a while until he, once again, waved his hand in front of my face. Back to Earth, Elliot. What's going on with you today? Nothing, I replied, and ran a nervous hand through my hair. Are you sure? He asked and put a hand over my forehead. When I slapped his hand away, not because I hated it, but because I liked it a little too much, he smiled. Just checking if you've got a fever. I haven't got a fever, I replied. Why are you flushed then? He muttered and followed me to our car. I looked at the single picture we had of the guy, James. He reminded me of my dad. They shared the same eyes, the same hair, even the same facial structure. The madness, however, looked more prominent in James' eyes than it did in my dad. He reminds me of my dad, I muttered, and put the file back in the back seat. Matt started the engine and looked at me. Looks wise, or... I swallowed, a little ashamed to bring this to his attention. Everything, Matt replied. Looks and everything else. Matt looked at me for a whole minute before he muttered a small, Right, under his breath. We were halfway on our way back to the station when he spoke up again. Look, Elliot, if this case looks difficult, I can ask Ryan to pair me up with someone else. You don't have to get involved. I want to, I replied. Matt took a moment to answer. Right, sure, of course. Hey, I said, and leaned against Matt's desk. It was late evening, and a few of us had already left for the day. The hustle bustle was less, and I could hear the low barking laughter of some of my colleagues. Thank God, they had a night shift. I couldn't imagine listening to them in the mornings. Hey, you. He grinned, looking more energetic. Why do you look so happy? Because I know I'm only two hours away from my bed. Right. I gave a small chuckle and brushed aside my fringes. I was wondering if you could drive me home today. I was wondering if you could drive me home today? Do you remember what happened the last time I was your ride? I clicked my tongue at the innuendo, even though my face flushed with burning shame. It was annoying how easily he could get under my skin. My car's in service, and I am way too tired to get a bus. Could you give me a ride? I sure can. He wriggled his eyebrows and laughed when I pushed myself close to smack him. Matt and I were kind of rivals a year or so ago. Our goal was to outdo each other in solved cases. Obviously, that meant we often threw sarcastic remarks at each other. There were two specific reasons that that kind of setting ended between us. And it all happened more than a year ago. One, Ryan had thrown a small party at his home to celebrate his engagement with his high school sweetheart. I drunk to celebrate not only my senior's engagement, but also my dad's recent demise. I knew I couldn't drive, so I asked a still sober Matt to drive me home. During the ride, he asked what I was celebrating. I had replied in a monotone, my dad's death. He went mum. I didn't remember what exactly happened after that, but even in my drunken state, I remember kissing him. He hadn't responded, saying that I was drunk, and I had mourned the loss of his touch. The next day, I was as disoriented as embarrassed I was. 
I apologized to him the next morning, and we waved it away and said that he didn't mind. I wasn't sure what he really meant. Two, a few days after that, Ryan called us into his room and informed us that we were to work together on a murder case. We spent a lot of hours together investigating the case, and during one of those days, ended up having sex at his place. It would be a lie to say that I didn't have a good time, but we each made an excuse and came to the conclusion that we weren't ready for a relationship. It was a barefaced lie. We just didn't want to deal with the onslaught of emotions that we knew would hit us. The case was closed, and we silently agreed to not talk about that one night and mutually decided it was best to stay away from each other. But that was impossible when we worked in the same station. We realized that quickly and gave up, though that didn't mean we didn't try to keep distance between us whenever possible or necessary. Now we were back working on a case together, and strangely, things looked like they were working a little too well between us, just like it did before. Want to have a drink or a coffee? Matt asked as he smoothly swirled his car. I was both halfway to sleep and tired as hell, and Matt's offer was as ludicrous as the situation I often found ourselves in. I know a good cafe five minutes from here. Weren't you sleepy? He shrugged. I was. I am, in fact. But I also feel like today's been a long day, and when Stacy wakes up, it's gonna get longer and longer. Maybe I should get used to long days. Okay, I replied. I'll drink hot chocolate, though. He gave a bark of laughter. Hot chocolate? What are you, five? Stop being an ageist. I rolled my eyes. No, right, sorry. He giggled a little to himself. It sounded so funny that I couldn't help but smile. I'll drink hot chocolate too then. He looked at me. If we're getting fat, we're getting fat together. <laughs> nice. Exactly the kind of support I want. He again giggled. We received the call that Stacy had woken up and was now more stable. We decided to give her some time to breathe and talk to her kids for the time being. Again, they had the same thing to tell us that we'd heard a hundred times by now. But the kids looked tired, and I asked their aunt if they were sleeping and eating well. She replied that they were just scared for their mom, and that it should be okay now that she was awake. Matt and I caught each other's eye and nodded at them. We have to find that man, I said. Gonna snap his neck when I find him. You cannot do that, I replied. Doesn't stop me from imagining hurting him, though. I rolled my eyes. These thoughts suit a police officer so much. Well, at the end of the day, he said, I am still a human. He then followed me into Stacy's hospital room. Stacy didn't have much to say either. She looked worried, and Matt and I tried to make ourselves as small as possible. I'm not sure where he could be, she had said. Sometimes, when he's upset or sad, he meets his aunt. She's old, and she doesn't know much about him. So don't hurt her. She's good. She is kind. We will not do anything to her, Stacy. Matt assured her. We just want to find James, I continued. If there's any place that he could be hiding, you can tell us. We promise he will not get close to your children or you again. Any friend, colleague, relative, or anyone else who helps him. She shook her head. He doesn't really work, and we don't really have a lot of properties. You should be able to find him at his aunt's place, and if not... She moved her injured arm over her stomach. Then he's probably hiding somewhere that I don't know. Okay, I replied. Thank you for telling us. She nodded. Has my restraining order been granted? Yes, of course. It was late evening when we walked out of the hospital. We were silent on our way back to the car, and when Matt settled in his seat, I couldn't help but talk about my similar past. He didn't intend to kill her, I said. But he tried a lot to control her, just like James. Sometimes I wondered if he was going to kill her. Matt didn't say anything, but he properly turned to me. One time, he nearly did, but he wasn't sorry for what he had done. Instead, as I remember it, he blamed it all on her. He said... If she died that day, then it would have entirely been her fault. I remember that day clearly, because that was the first time he'd hit me. How old were you? Matt's voice was a soft whisper. Five and a few months, I think. Matt looked so distraught that I couldn't help but let out a wry chuckle. Yeah, I was still a baby. 
Surprisingly, Matt brought a hand to my lap and held my hand. This was the most touchy he had been since that night. It sort of both soothed me and set my skin on fire. Then, she killed herself. I softly finished. You were still a child? I was still a child, I agreed. Sometimes I wish that she'd taken me with her. That would have been kind of her. Matt rubbed a thick thumb over the back of my head. It's over, Elliot, he softly said. I am glad you're here, you know. I let out a small breath of laughter. Why are you being cheeky? I am not being cheeky, he huffed. And I mean it. I am glad you were here, and I am glad that I know you. Right. I replied and pulled my hand back. My face was warm. You make life tolerable, he continued. Life seems easy. Matt was closing the boundary that we both agreed we didn't want to, but at the same time, I couldn't help but think that that conversation happened a year ago. A lot had changed in that time. For instance, Matt and I had grown closer and become friends. Maybe time did us some good. Maybe we can send someone to the aunt's place. I think that should work, Matt agreed. Hopefully, I replied. There's little chance he'd be there. When he stopped the car in front of my house, he grabbed my hand before I could leave. Elliot, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together, like outside of our working hours. Obviously, I replied and blushed, suddenly not as tired and weary. Obviously, he repeated. He rubbed a thumb over my pulse point. If you want, I'd like to, uh, get to know you, if you know what I mean. I knew what he meant, I smiled. Your place or mine? Uh, mine? Yeah, we can. Great. And I was right, James wasn't at his aunt's place, so one of the guys was stationed somewhere close, and he kept a close watch day and night. For days, he didn't receive any news. As the days passed, the situation was growing more hopeless. It was disappointing in more ways than one. Matt and I often met Stacy and her kids at the hospital and would always give them the disappointing news. It shamed us. Me more than Matt. On the following Saturday, I was at Matt's place. Do you think we should talk to the aunt? I asked. Matt was pouring us drinks. Do you think that would help? I shrugged, even though I knew he couldn't see. What if she knows? I replied. What if she's hiding him? Stacy did say she was nice. Matt replied, Yeah, but we cannot be sure. Okay. He replied and gave me a glass. We can do that. He settled by my side on the couch. There was a little distance between us. Elliot, they are safe, all right? You don't have to constantly worry. Our guys are keeping watch, and we are sure to find the guy. I shrugged. I knew he made sense. Throughout the years, we had seen several such cases, and some of them had ended worse. But I still couldn't shake off the similarities between Stacy's seven-year-old son and my seven-year-old self. I had lost my mom at seven, and if James had gone further, the kid would have lost his. The thought wasn't easy to shake off my head. It was almost like a punishment. Several times in the past few days, I wondered if I should talk to Ryan about giving this case to someone else. But each time, I faltered. I wanted to find James and watch him get the kind of justice that my dad had managed to escape. I'm trying not to think too much about it, I assured him. Okay, so how about you help me cook dinner? Are you kidding me? I made an incredulous face. You invited me over and now you want me to help you? Yeah, we are adults, he insisted with a grin. Right, I rolled my eyes. Kidding, he said with a small smile. I have cooked. We can eat. Two hours later, I was getting ready to leave. I had worn my shoes and was standing at his door. I said I was sleepy and that I would have to take the bus because I didn't want to drive as drunk as I was. My voice must have sounded whiny because Matt smiled and leaned against the door. Do you want to ride, Elliot? Is that it? And, well, that was how we threw all cautions out of the window and slept together after a whole year. At least... I thought, sleepy as I was, his kisses tasted the same. I first heard the shrill ringtone, then the hushed mutterings from Matt, before he softly woke me up. His breath smelled, and I kind of wanted to kiss him despite that, though it all shifted to the back of my mind when he whispered, Elliot, we have a lead. What? I asked and sat up, feeling dizzy at the sudden movement. 
Here, have some water. I took the glass from his hands and looked at him. We both looked the same kind of messy, and I was both glad and horrified at how much I seemed to like this state of us. What happened? I asked. He breathed. They found James, he said, and grabbed the pants off the floor. Or at least they think it's him. What's that supposed to mean? Matt stopped and bit his bottom lip. He's dead. It was Sunday, so there were fewer people on the road. I was both glad and hateful that it took us less than usual time to reach the place where they'd found James's body. On the drive, Matt informed me about the situation. It was assumed that James must have lost his way. He was drunk and ran into the speeding cars on the highway. One of them must have hit him, but he was pretty alive when he dragged himself away from there. Then he died under the bridge. That was all we knew. The officer said we would need to wait for the forensic report to get the final picture. When we reached there, I didn't want to get out of the car. Matt sat by my side and didn't say a word until I turned to him. My thumb looked red where I had been biting at its skin. I don't want to go. That's all right, he immediately said. I'll take a look. I nodded and watched him leave. For the next half an hour, as I watched the team discussing the situation, I couldn't help but think that this was the kind of death my dad deserved. He escaped too easily. When Matt walked back to the car, I asked him what was going on. What's the situation? I added. He shrugged. Pretty messy, but, well... I avoided looking in a particular direction. We'll have to tell Stacy about this. Yeah, he replied, and slapped the roof of the car. Do you want to get coffee? I need coffee. Got a headache. His smile was unbearably soft when he looked at me. Sure, Elliot. Stacy took the news better than Matt and I had expected. When we asked if she needed a glass of water, she shook her head. He'd done this before, she began. He was drunk and ran himself straight into a car. It cost us a fortune just to keep him alive. Good riddance, I couldn't help but say. Matt immediately held my hand, a sign to not say too much. I was grateful for it, because Stacy looked like she would burst into tears anytime soon. I told Matt I was sure those were happy tears. Do you want to have lunch? He checked his watch. We have to finish the report. We can do that after lunch. He suggested and pressed a hand to the small of my back. Let's get you fed. You haven't eaten anything since last night. What about you? I had a banana this morning. I rolled my eyes. As if that's enough. It's not. That's why we should get some lunch. Ryan was in his office when we knocked at his door a few hours later. He beckoned both of us and smiled at us. You guys did it again. Yeah, we did. I'm so glad you're part of this department. Unfortunately, we found him dead, sir. Ryan waved his hand into the air. That kind of man deserved that. Don't tell anyone I said that. So, if everything's done, can we go? Matt asked. Sure, sure. I have nothing else to say. The report should be done soon, I told him. Take your time. He leaned against the chair. It's Sunday. It's your day off. Have fun. I narrowed my eyes on him. Are you sure, sir? When am I not, Elliot? Right before we could walk out, he loudly cleared his throat. You two look nice together, by the way. Do invite me to your wedding. Sir? Now get out. Matt was nosing along the side of my neck when he whispered, I cannot believe I deny myself you for an entire year. We were afraid, that's all right. He huffed out a laugh against my neck. We sure took our time. Maybe that'll help us in the long run. I turned to look at him. We were at the local bar and the music was way too loud. If we weren't sitting so close, we would have had a hard time understanding what the other person was saying. Do you think working on this case helped us make the quick decision? It sure helped, he answered. Would we have done it if it wasn't for that? He shrugged. I cannot say for sure, Elliot. I like being around you, I softly confessed against his mouth. It was sudden. I didn't know why I said it. I just knew that I wanted to get that off my chest. He smiled and genuinely looked happy. Same here, honestly. He ran a finger through my fringes and asked if I wanted to see his parents. They would like to meet you. They know me? He shrugged. I might have told them a few things about you, sure. All good things, I suppose. He grinned. 
You'll have to meet them to find that out. I smiled. Right. When I first met his parents, the party was loud and huge, and it immediately reminded me of the time when I heard that he came from a wealthy family. It was obvious in the opulence I noticed in the vicinity. People were dressed so well that I felt underdressed in my most expensive attire. When I found Matt, I grabbed his wrist and asked him to rescue me. He smiled and dragged me to his bedroom. You don't need to be so worried. He laughed into my mouth, his arms easily finding their place around my waist. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here too. I replied and pulled him in a hug. He smelled like expensive cologne. I can't wait to meet your parents, but... I stopped and looked down at my clothes. I am afraid I look unimpressive. What are you talking about? He gasped and pulled me at arm's length. You look gorgeous. Thanks, but not everyone's in awe of me the way you are. In awe, he repeated and kissed me on the cheek. That is correct. I am in awe of you. You're like the best police officer I've ever met in my life. Better than yourself? I asked. Better than myself. He whispered against my mouth. But seriously, you don't need to feel so nervous. I know they look daunting, but they're all very friendly people. They'll love you. I hope so. My voice came out smaller than I wanted it to. After the failure that I called my family, I really wanted to get liked by another. If things worked out well between Matt's parents and me, maybe I would finally have some decent people to call mom and dad. In hindsight, perhaps that was really what I wanted the most of my life after, well, Matt. Would you like to wear my jacket? Coat? I compared our frames. Won't they look big on me? Oh, hell yeah. You're going to drown in my clothes, but, you know, I will like it. He wriggled his eyebrows and pulled away from me to search for something from his walk-in closet. He really belonged to money. It was almost making me dizzy. He ruffled my hair when I was done with it. The jacket did indeed look a little big on me, but I still looked handsome in it. Somehow, I made it work. Elliot, he said, and hugged me from behind. You'll be all right, sweetheart. You're doing really well. There was a bile stuck in my throat, but I didn't want to cry. Just give it some time, Matt continued. It has to get better. Thanks, I replied. I am trying. And that's all that we really need. He smiled against the crook of my neck. Be my boyfriend, and I will never leave your side. This is a nice way to propose. I have better ways, but then we'll get late to my mom's party, so... I openly laughed along with him. The very idea that it took me nearly a year to realize I felt happier with him by my side than not sounded insane to me now. In the end, when the cake cutting was done and everyone had found their way to their respective groups, Matt and I sneaked into his bedroom and did what we had been waiting for the entire evening. At least, his bed was comfortable. I was going through a file when Matt stopped by my desk. Ryan's looking for you, he announced. For what? I asked, and pulled my eyes away from the screen. Matt shrugged. He said there's a new case. Is he asking for you too? Unfortunately, no. He placed a little container in front of me. That's for Mom. She said she was glad you liked her cooking. Oh, I replied, and smoothed my trembling fingers over the little note attached to the container. It read a simple, I hope you still enjoy my food, son, for Mom. Oh, I said again. Matt smiled. She was asking for you. Maybe we can go over to your parents' house over the weekend. Our parents' house, he softly corrected. Did you forget they asked you to treat them as your parents? No, I didn't. We can meet them sometime. I think this weekend we should spend some time together, talk and kiss. Just us. That's a nice idea, I agreed. I know. He sighed and straightened up. Well, I will not hold you up any longer. See what the boss is asking for this time. Maybe I should thank him first. Maybe you should, he said, and gave me a small kiss. When Matt and I went over the weekend, we laughed at how ridiculous it looked that we didn't start dating the second we slept together the first time. But I guess that was for a good reason, because after that particular night, we'd spent every day pining for each other. 
All we needed was a little push, even though it came through a grisly case. Matt's parents were nicer than I assumed them to be. They treated me with so much kindness that I was immediately reminded of those days when my mom still laughed along to my little giggles. And yes, I call Matt's parents my parents now. It seemed to work better that way in Matt's opinion. Have you ever taken a moment to come to terms with your feelings for someone? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and to stay wholesome.